Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of How It Works. Today we're gonna look at how suspension work. This is very interesting because you have some really great suspension and there's a ton of different ones. Some of them are great, other ones seems to be more marketing than anything else. So let's jump into it. <music> The first one is a classic spring suspension. This one we have it on the Phantom, on the Ghost, on the City, uh, even on the old Explorer and City within those blue coil that you can see here. There was a spring enclosed within it. On the Phantom, you can adjust it, which is great. You have the screw at the top that you can just simply twist with the Allen key. It's gonna compress the spring, making it a bit stiffer. This is still great, and the suspension of, on the Phantom has four different springs, so it's a lot more uh, bouncier than what you have on the, on the Ghost. The Ghost only has two, one in the front, one in the rear. The Phantom is two in the front, two in the rear. It's just that the Phantom is gonna bounce back a lot quicker. So again, if you're looking to go off-road, that's a great scooter for it. Then you have the one that we had on the old Explore and the city the one that are blue i like them because they were really discreet but they were horizontal and i really believe that this is not a proper way to put suspension because you need different pivot point and also the stress that you're putting on the component uh, it's not ideal so i'm glad that for the new city and the new explorer we're going uh, towards something that is standing vertical it's going to feel much better on the new city it's between the ghost and the phantom because we have three springs Two in the back and one in the front. What I like about the CD suspension is that there's rubber dampener inside the suspension. So when you reach the bottom point, it's a lot smoother on your feet. That's pretty much it for spring suspension. Again, you have a lot of different types of it, uh, but those one are the main one that you're gonna see the most commonly. <music> Then we have hydraulic suspension, which is usually on more expensive scooter. There's two type of hydraulic suspension. You have the first one that is like the one we showed you on the pro video for the V1, V2, V3, and V4. This is a fully enclosed barrel and there's no way for you to adjust it. You don't have any adjustment dial. So it come pre-adjusted and that's pretty much it. That's great because usually that limit the amount of leak that you have with hydraulic suspension because just like the brake, again, go check out our brake video if you want to learn more about it. Those adjustment point can be a source of leaking. So you really have to choose a reliable supplier for this. You can imagine oil is extremely thin, right? So you need extremely good bushing to contain this. And when you jump on the scooter, the force that is exerted on all those bushing is uh, very high. So the bushing that you use and the seal need to be excellent. The second type of hydraulic suspension looks like this. And usually it's DNM that we see a lot uh, in the electric scooter world. This is a really good brand and you can recognize them because the dial to adjust them uh, is red. We have them on more expensive scooters. Uh, usually you're looking at 72 volt scooter that are over $5,000. Those one are pretty great because, well, they don't really leak uh, often. At least I didn't see a lot of case of it. And it's great because the suspension can be adjusted to someone who weighed uh, 120 pounds or someone who weighed 350 pounds. By dialing the suspension, they can achieve the same level of comfort and I love it. I think it's brilliant. And lastly, the difference between the first type of suspension and the second type of suspension is obviously the outside spring. The first one don't add any spring outside, it's really just hydraulic barrel while the second one has the hydraulic tank inside and it's surrounded by a spring. Uh, this one is a lot more comfortable and it's gonna bounce back a lot quicker. So overall, the second type is the way to go. Who knows, maybe this is what you're gonna see on the V5 of the Pro. The last one that we have in our lineup is rubber suspension. With the Pro for the V1, V2, V3, and V4, and V5, for all of them, uh, you can see that we have a rear rubber suspension. I love this one because it's completely invisible. You can put it in the frame and there is no compromise on design. And also the maintenance of this is minimal. You're gonna need to change the rubber block maybe every two or 3,000 kilometers. But overall, you know, there's nothing that's gonna leak. There's nothing that can squeak. Assembly-wise, it's also very easy because you just put a block of rubber uh, between your two moving parts. And it's also very consistent, you know? You can imagine when you install hydraulic suspension or spring suspension, you need to dial the suspension always to the same thing for the user. So that's it for the suspension of our lineup. Now we're gonna look at other suspension we see in the market. Uh, some of them look promising and some of them look more uh, effective for marketing than absorbing shock actually. The first one is rubber block suspension that is mounted on the swing arm and you see this on the new uh, Navi 
and which is a new brand of Xiaomi. You see it on Dualtron as well. I like this one because it's completely invisible and it's enclosed. So there's nothing that can get inside if it's well sealed. Like we have on the city, if we don't protect your spring really well with the fender, it's gonna get dirty. That's what we fixed on the Pro, you know, the fender is gonna go all the way down. This type of suspension is fully enclosed. So even if there's dirt on it, uh, it won't affect the suspension. It's just gonna be the outside appearance uh, that is affected and you can wash it down. This type of suspension might not offer a quick adjustment depending on your weight, but there is cartridge that you can buy with different stiffness for the rubber. So if you are a heavier rider, usually the company providing the scooter, they're gonna sell you cartridge that, with a stiffer rubber or a softer one. So you can really dial it to your preference. When you jump on this one, it also feel really smooth because when you bottom out, you don't reach the limit of a spring, right? Or a dampener. It's just a rubber that's against other rubbers. The other one is an original one, say the least. It's called a Leaf Suspension. This is from a company called Scotsman. The idea behind this scooter is to 3D print the whole frame and then send it, refine it to make it smooth and look pretty good. This campaign is still ongoing on Indiegogo. They raised $825,000 and they stopped responding to all their backers. If you back this project and you're looking to get an actual scooter, go check out our website. I think the Apollo City would be a pretty good replacement to this. Scotsmen were claiming that the way that the infill of the 3D print, you can decide that inside the frame when you 3D print it, it's going to be squares, it's going to be triangle, it's going to be wave like this. There's tons of ways to do it for different reasons. Some of them uh, make the parts differ, the other one more flexible, which is the case for the leap system. Um, they were explaining that when you jump on the scooter, the whole infill will work with the frame to make it uh, bend a little and act as a suspension. It's an interesting concept. I'm not sure how well it would have really worked uh, in reality but that's the only time I saw this and I thought it was pretty interesting. The other one that I think is pretty interesting as well is from Bo Scooter. This scooter looks phenomenal. It can't fold, which is pretty funny to me, a scooter that cannot fold. The design look amazing. And to overweight the fact that they have no suspension, they claim to use a special grip tape that basically is gonna absorb shock of the road. So maybe there's like a small layer of foam in it. I know some electric skateboard do this. Uh, when I was doing electric skateboard myself, I had this. The end result is, it's okay, it's so-so, you know? Maybe if you had like 12 inch tires like you have on the Pro, for example, that would help as well because the bigger the tire, the less you feel the little bumps, right? But they have a 10 inch tubeless tire, I believe. I don't quote me on that, but this is also pretty interesting. And maybe using this grip tape coupled with an actually real suspension would give pretty good result. Lastly, you have the one that are claiming to be a suspension and they are not really a suspension. I'm looking at Segway, which is pretty good to claim those things and even Xiaomi. Basically just saying that the tires on your scooter is gonna act as a suspension, and that it's gonna absorb shock. This is true a little bit because having air in your tire is better than solid tire, for example. Solid tires are just the worst. You feel every little bump. So in a sense, it is true that tire is gonna absorb it, but still I wouldn't call this a suspension. For me, I need a real system that's gonna move and really absorb shock to deserve this title. Those are all the types of suspension that I'm aware of. If I missed any, let me know down in the comment below. And if you have any questions or requests for a future video, let us know as well.